Come on, give God some praise in the house this morning. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful readings that we had this morning in the lectionary scripture. And there is another one that was also in there that we did not read from the New Testament. It's from the book of Acts. I ask that you go there with me this morning. Book of Acts, the eighth chapter. And we found this passage of scripture, please signify by saying, amen. Acts 8. And let's begin at the 14th verse. And from the New International Version, it reads, when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God. They sent Peter and John to Samaria. When they arrived, they prayed for new believers there that they might receive the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit had not yet come on any of them. They had simply been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John, get this, then Peter and John placed their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Church, say amen. amen. For just a few minutes, I'm going to try to keep this short, amen. Holy Spirit, fall on us. Holy Spirit, fall on us. Anybody need the Holy Spirit to fall on them this morning? Come on, y'all. Anybody need a touch from God this morning? Anybody need to know that God is still by your side this morning? Anybody just need God this morning? Hmm. As I, as, I, as I read over the scripture, uh, my mind went to other places in the Bible. It also talked about uh, the power of God falling on the people. In First Chronicles we, 21 and 26, David made an altar to the Lord and called upon the Lord, and God answered him from heaven by fire upon the altar of burnt offerings. In, 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 in Second Corinthians 7 and 1, Solomon had made a great sacrifice to the Lord when he had made an end of praying. The fire came down. Somebody say the fire came down. The fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices. The, the, these were visible, tangible manifestations of God but where they could actually see it happen. Then, then the one that really stands out was when Elijah squared off with Ahab and the false prophets of Baal upon Mount Carmel. The false prophets and the true prophet, the man of God, Elijah, came to an agreement. Uh, they would both build an altar and offer a sacrifice, but, 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 but put no fire under it. Come on, somebody. That's when you're looking for a miracle. And, and they would call on their respective God. And, and, and the God that answered by fire, he would be recognized as the true God. The story goes, the false prophets built their offer, altar and, and laid the sacrifice on the altar and called upon Baal from, from morning to noon, but they got no answer. Elijah began to mock at him, pick at him. Where your God at? <laughs> Where your God at? Come, come, come on. You ain't heard from your God yet? Hmm. Then they became violent, upset, went crazy in a frenzy, began to jump on the altar, cut themselves with knives. You know that's crazy. Blood started gushing all over everywhere. Now, now they kept doing this from noon to the evening sacrifice. Then Elijah took over. He repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. He put the wood in order and put the sacrifice on the wood. Then he had them pour 12 barrels of water 
on the altar. Come on now. Anybody ever built a fire before you build a fire, you put water on it? Y'all better say amen this morning. Oh, uh, come on, come on. Then he began to pray. He began to pray. He began to pray. He began to pray. The Bible says, then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and stone and the dust and, and, and sucked up the water that was in the trench. Now, that's a fire, y'all. And, 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 and when the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, ah, now that's a God. <laughs> that's a God. Any of you ever got to that moment in your life and you know, you knew right then it was God that moved in your life? Mm. Mm. Then my mind goes to Acts 2, 1 and 4. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Uh, and you jump down to verse 4 and it says, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And, and if you, you go to that text, you'll find out even though they were speaking in other tongues, everyone understood what was being said. Mm. You see, the fire of God fell on David's altar and burnt off. The fire of God fell on Solomon's offering and sacrifice. The power of God fell on Mount Carmel. The Holy Ghost fell on the day of Pentecost. In every case, Old and New Testament, it was a visible, tangible, right-in-your-face manifestation of God. What really concerns me today is this. We are raising a generation of Christians who have never had a God encounter. Some of you in here right now, come on, Lord, move on your people right quick. Come on, some of you, folk, folks all around us, and let me say again, right in here have never experienced a touch of God. You may know God in theory. Come on, you may know him religiously. You might even know him intellectually. Oh, in any other way. But you have not felt God. Many folks today have never had that Mount Carmel, that day of Pentecost encounter with God, falling on them. Well, I, I, I came on assignment today, Elder. I came for a reason today to tell you that the Holy Spirit is not just an idea, a theory, a philosophy to be studied. It's not a figment of your imagination. It's not just religious talk. It's real. He's real. Because the Spirit we talk about as a thing is actually a he, part of the Trinity. He is. The same that fell on Mount Carmel. The same day of Pentecost, the same that fell in Cornelius' house. Come on, the Spirit of God is real. The Spirit of God, you can touch it. It's alive, and it can be contagious if you want it. Get this. The Spirit of God shows God's true power. The power of God is the only power that can heal Doctors, come on, doctors can cut out diseases, but doctors can't heal. Holy Spirit, come on and fall on us. Doctors can administer radiation and chemo, but even then the body suffers from their harmful side effects. Come on, God, fall on us. Come on, y'all. Doctors, come on, come on. But, but the Spirit of God can burn cancer out of your body and never leave a trace, a scar, no harmful side effects. Come on, Holy Spirit, fall on us. But the Spirit of God can, can burn drugs out of your system and take the desire all of the time completely out. Come on, Holy Spirit, and fall on us. The Spirit of God can restore missing body parts. Come on, Holy Spirit, fall on us this morning. I can make this an hour long if y'all don't say amen. 
I feel them going to sleep on me out there. You understand what I'm saying? The Spirit of God can deliver you from alcohol, pornography, lust, perversion. Come on, Holy Spirit, and fall on us this morning. The Spirit of God will burn up jealousy, pride, criticism. Mm. Come on, bitterness, unforgiveness. Come on, Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God heal your broken heart. It will restore joy and peace. Anybody need any peace this morning? Come on, Holy Spirit, and fall on us. The Spirit of God can heal marriages. Come on, Holy Spirit, fall on us. The Spirit of God will heal your mind. Hmm. My prayer is, God, if you did it then, do it again. Do it again. We need you to touch us today, oh God. Let, let the fire fall. That, that same fire that, that fell on the day of Pentecost, that fell on the Gentiles in Cornelius' house, do it again. Let it fall. Let the Spirit fall on your people right now. Come, Pop. Rush in, grab us, grab us. Somebody needs to be grabbed because some of us are moving in the wrong direction. Take hold of us, Lord. Take hold of us, Lord. Take hold, take hold of me, Lord. We don't know what we're doing. Say amen. Mm, come on, y'all. Come on, come on. That same power that made the three Hebrew children fireproof. Come on, y'all. I need that. That Holy Spirit. Come on. Got, got, that, 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 that gave Daniel's line <laughs> locked jaw. <laughs> I need that Holy Spirit. That, that shook Paul and Silas's chains off. Anybody need any chains to fall off this morning? Mmm. It's the same power that opened blind eyes, unstopped deaf ears, that made the lame to walk and the dumb to talk. This is the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. It's the same spirit, the same anointing, the same power that God wants to send on your life right now if you just let him. You just got to let him. Come, Holy Spirit, fall on us. Do you hear him today? He wants to touch every person that's hearing this word. Come on, y'all. Matthew 5 and 6, blessed are they that hunger, hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. All you got to do is seek. Stay in that word. Watch what God does for you. Come on, y'all. Matthew 7 and 7. Ask and ye shall receive. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door will be open. Jeremiah 33 and 3 says, Call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. We don't know left from right. Y'all, y'all laughing. There's a baby over there. If you teach that baby that this is the baby's left hand and this is the right, that's what they'll go on doing from now on. Y'all better get this this morning. God wants you to hunger for him. He wants you to desire him. He wants you to thirst for him. He wants you to, 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 to dig deeper into his word to find more and more about him. Not just come here on Sunday, get a little word, check the box, and walk out. Y'all might as well say amen. amen. See, your hunger is your magnet. <laughs> hunger will draw the anointing. Hunger will open the door for the power of God. Come on, Holy Spirit, and fall on my folks this morning. Am I talking to anybody who's hungry this morning? Am I talking to anybody here who wants the presence and the power of God in their life? If so, just say amen. 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 
Does anybody want to experience the reality of God this morning? See, every now and then, I need a show enough God experience in my life. I know all of you have lived a wonderful life. Y'all done it right. <coughs> you're not worried. You already got your ticket to heaven. Say amen. So, so you're not worried. You, you, God is there for you, but it, there's some folks like me. I worry every day. Come on, y'all. I, I know that we've got to stand before the Lord and give an account of everything that we've done. Oh, y'all better say amen. I, I, I want the reality of God's power to say, you are forgiven. Only he can do that. Am I talking to anybody who is not satisfied with just religion and tradition this morning? Oh, that just hit y'all right there. Y'all so locked in tradition. Some of us, man, we can't get out. Mmm. Took everything I could do to get y'all over here in this building. not satisfied with theories, philosophies? Am I talking to anybody who wants the power of the Pentecost in their life this morning? Then I pray. I pray that you get hungry for God. It's, it's, not, it's not... It's not something that's just going to happen in your life. You're just not going to be sitting there in bed, Corey, and God's going to show up. You got to want God. You got to move from what you've been doing into something new. You got to change some things in your life. <coughs> the Bible tells me his spirit will not dwell in an unclean place. This is our temple. If the temple is not right, God ain't showing up. You better hear Reb this morning. God's looking for somebody who's looking for him. Just like you went out shopping for Christmas gifts, if you go shopping for God, let me tell you, you'll find a gift. He's never lost a patient. Nobody's ever gone bankrupt when they had God. He's got joy, he's got peace, he's got... He's got everything you need. Holy Spirit, I beg you this morning, fall on my people. Fall on my people. Whether they realize it or not, fall on them this morning. Won't you stand all over?